come into a valley, one like I've never been before. I keep searching for a way out. I can't find an open door. Oh, there must be another sunrise, another sunset that I'll see. God will make this trial a blessing. That's the love he has for me. I was not the first one to come into this place. You see, every child of God, this test he must face. It is here that God will mold you and make you what you are to be. God will make this trial a blessing. Just be patient and you'll see. God will make this trial a blessing. Though it sends me to my knees. Though my tears flow like a river. Yet in Him there's sweet relief. There's no need to get discouraged. There's no need to talk defeat. God will make this trial a blessing, and the whole wide world will see. Now I'm standing on the mountain, looking back and I can see. When I was in that lowest valley, his strong hand was leading me. Oh, it's good to see the sunshine and to taste sweet victory. God has made this trial a blessing, oh, the grace he gives to me. God will make this trial a blessing, though it sends me to my knees. Though my tears flow like a river, yet in Him there's sweet relief. There's no need to get discouraged, there's no need to talk defeat. God will make this trial a blessing, and the whole wide world will see. God will make your trial a blessing, though it sends you to your knees. Though your tears flow like a river, yet in Him there's sweet relief. There's no need to get discouraged, there's no need to talk defeat. God will make your trial a blessing, and the whole wide world will see. God will make this trial a blessing, and the whole wide world will see. What treasures the morning did bring There was joy beyond telling A hope beyond failing I'm acquainted with all these things I am familiar with mercy Every day along the way The sweetest love There has been plenty Forgiveness when need be I am no stranger to grace Praying this morning As I try to thank Him his peace fell around me The same as yesterday And even though my tomorrows May have sadness and 
sorrow I will still be no stranger to grace. I am familiar with mercy, known my share of victories, covered with compassion every day along the way. The sweetest love there has been plenty for stranger to grace, 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 God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within, grace to cross the river. To face forever, there'll be new grace when it's my time to die. The sweetest love there has been plenty, forgiveness when need be. I am no stranger to. Oh, oh, oh.
Sir, nakamute po kayo. Good morning everyone and sorry nakamute na pala ako. And praise the Lord sa time together that we have right now sa ating programa dito po sa ating pong Workman's Treasure Study Series. And um, it's a blessing to be here. And of course, um, we thank God for every opportunity that the Lord has provided for us to learn the Word of God. And um, we have so many opportunities. I mean, these are just one of the supplemental elements of your, of, of your uh, growth. And of course, you have your church, you have the preachings and every Sunday, every Wednesday and these things. And uh, they were all work together so that you could, you could grow amen, in the Lord and be faithful to him. Amen. And it's a blessing to, to be here and to minister the word of God to God's people and praise God sa uh, kabutihan ng Panginoon na kanyang pinagkakalob sa atin. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and uh, sa ating lahat, good morning. I'd like to greet a beautiful morning dito sa Zoom, sa mga kapatiran po natin. At even dito sa Facebook Live, we are so blessed na makasama ang bawat isa dito. Ngayon, I'm so excited to the, today because of course every Wednesday, I, we are talking about, um, about the pattern of biblical submission. Amen. And uh, we're, we're so blessed. And I don't know if you have my booklet on that pattern on biblical submission and but i i am i am adding things on that in that study so i am trying to uh, put some things that i miss and in that booklet and i but i trust the lord that some of you who have met me brother brother tawag nito brother limwell actually Brother Limwell, ay meron ka na dito naka-reserve sa akin. Hindi ko lang alam kung paano ko ipapadala sa iyo yung full compilation ng Workman's Treasure Study Series. Kasi yun yung utang ko sa kanila, reward yun. And nila nung wala daw silang absent sa kanilang... Pagka-uwi na lang siguro niyan, hindi ko alam kung paano. Kay, kay Sister Kat Paredes na ibigay ko na yung sa kanya, and kay sister uh, kay ano na lang kay brother Limwell yun yung reward ko no anniversary first year anniversary ng ng atin pong uh, uh, workman ay hindi na ating online ministries anyway um uh, that would that could help you to prime you up po mga kapatid that's i think uh, we have published that since 2015 okay we published the the workman's treasure since 2015. Amen, amen. And uh, ang lahat ng binibigyan ko ng full compilation na yun ay magpapastor. So, hindi bigyan pag hindi magpastor. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. And uh, glory to God. And uh, praise God for that. Amen. So, let's greet ang ating po mga kapatiran dito. Kasama na natin, of course, si Brother Limwell. Nakikita natin medyo mahina yung signal nila. Putol-putol po siya. And of course, nasa dagat sila. Sa gitna sila ng karagatan. And of course, uh, good good morning din sa ating host, si Brother Joma. Thank you God for uh, his available time. At sa kanya mga assistant. Amen. May mga assistant host yan siya. Amen. And good morning din kay uh, Mother Mary. Good to see Mother Mary once again with us dito po sa ating pong programa. Si Sister Mercy Mekos, good morning din. Also watching from Baguio City. Magandang umaga po. And Sister Mercy Mekos, amen. Mother Mary, naka-highlight ka sa Facebook. Uh, wave ka naman, mag-high ka. Yan, wala na. Tapos na ata. Amen. And also, kasama natin ang Buado family, si Mr. Maricel at si Stephen. Good morning. At kakabalik lang nila dito. Dito sa Adulam. And under quarantine pa sila. Of course, na-miss namin yung fellowship nila. And by and by, ay matapos din yan. No? And also, si uh, Pastor Randy. Kasama natin si Pastor Randy Miasco. Watching also from Candaba, Pampanga. Good morning, Pastor Randy and your family. And kasama din natin yung Dimakulangan family. Good morning din po sa inyo. And ganun din ang si Brother Edmond and Sister Mila. Good morning din. Amen. And also si Brother Elmer. Kasama din natin si Brother Elmer this morning. Good morning din kay Brother Elmer and kay Brother Mark Tihada. Magandang umaga. Let me read some greetings and some hellos and highs dito po sa atin pong 
uh, messen uh, dito po sa ating um, meeting room dito sa chat box ng meeting room sabi ni Brother Limwell good morning again okay good morning and Mother Mary sabi niya what a blessing to be always together as believers in Christ who love to come and know truth amen know the truth from his holy word from this online ministry through this mouthpiece our god given evangelist of our time sir Roji. and thank god for your life sir given away for his for him for his own pleasure preach on sir again we are we all here ready to hear and listen and learn amen your labor is not in vain and may god bless his word to us all and good day ahead to all of us and glory to god amen amen good morning good morning and kay sister mercy meko sabi niya uh, good morning again it's a, a it's a blessing for an opportunity to learn more about god amen that's right and it is soul nourishing that's true amen praise god and god bless amen and si pastor randy sabi niya mag pastor na daw si brother dimwell pag naka receive sa evangelist yan tama yun Maganda yun. Amen. Amen. And uh, pagka-uwi niyan, yan na yung isend out nating missionary doon sa Naga. Na? And uh, mag-isip ka na ng pangalan ng church doon, Brother Limuel. Hindi <laughs> ko alam kung narinig pa ni Brother Limuel. <laughs> and good morning din kay sabi ni Sister Mila. And good morning po Evangelist Roji and brethren and kay Brother Edmond. Okay, good morning. And dako tayo sa Facebook Live. Uh, meron tayong mga kapatira na kasama na natin ngayon dito sa Facebook Live. And uh, si Sister Mercy Barrera, kasama muli natin. Good morning, Sister Mercy. And uh, sabi niya, good morning Evangelist and to all our brethren watching from Candaba, Pampanga. Diyan po sa, uh, sa ano po sa... Berean Baptist Church. Brother Randy Rigor, watching from uh, ano ba, Sampalok, Manila. And blessed, good morning po ulit, Evangelist Roji, and to our host and to all brethren. God bless po sa bawat isa. Glory to God. Amen. Si Kasama muli natin, Sister Emma Gabay. Sabi niya, once again, mapagpalang araw po, Evangelist Roji, at sa ating mga saints. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Sister Emma. Brother Virgilio also, from Mas, watching from Masbate. And good to have Brother Virgilio. Sabi niya, good morning po evangelist. And to all brethren, salamat sa Panginoon sa mensahe na lagi niyo pong dala. May the Lord help us to all our weakness and salamat sa patuloy sa strength, wisdom na binigay niya. Preach on. Amen. Evangelist Roger. Amen. Amen. Preach on. Amen. Kat, Sister Kat Paredes, also from Santiago. Thanks uh, God for blessing us through listening to His Word. Glad to be with you here, evangelists and all saints. Keep uh, preaching po in God's glory. Amen, amen. And these are the faithful brethren po doon po sa uh, atin pong um, Church of Like Faith doon po sa uh, Santiago, sa Ambassadors for Christ. Amen. Baptist Church. Amen. And uh, praise God for that. And si, si, si Pastor Ronald, okay, sa Shining Light, Baptist Church, okay, si Pastor Ronald Suazo is with us again. And sabi niya, blessed morning po ulit, evangelist. Always excited to hear God's pure and precious words. Thank God sa mga pastors, mga men of God na kasama po natin every day. Amen, amen. Sabi niya, pagpalain po ang kaniyang mga salita, maihayag this morning. Amen. Sister Senya, kasama din natin Sister Senya, watching from... Uh, Mangkayan Binget. Amen. Good morning, Sister Senya. Good morning, Brother Hubert. Amen. Good to have you dito sa Facebook. Sabi niya, good morning, Evangelist Roji and to all brethren. Morning po. Morning sa inyo. Pastor Robert Casis, ang kaibigan nating pastor, watching from Valenzuela City. Good morning, Pastor Robert, and good to have you this morning. Sabi niya, good morning po, uh, Pastor Roji, at sa lahat, God bless. Amen. Good morning po sa inyo. Amen. And also si uh, Pastor Cesar, sabi niya, good AM, ang ating future evangelist sa Mindanao. And it's a blessing to have Pastor Cesar with us. And sabi niya, good AM, evangelist. Amen. Good morning, Pastor. And Brother Nolison also, Kaligan from Santiago din. And sabi niya, a blessed morning again, evangelist. Uh, Roger and to all 
saints thanking the Lord always for everyday blessing from His God's Word. Amen. And from His Word, just ready to hear, listen, and learn. Glory to God. Reach on, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Amen, amen. So welcome everyone sa atin and we will be dealing, talking about the continuation of our discussion on the preservation of marriage and family. We talked about that last time. So last, well, wala pala tayong broadcast last Wednesday, nung karaan pa kaya. I have to refresh you a little bit of that. Then we will deal on the real issue and Lord willing, we will be looking at the, ano, the submission of the wife or the submission of the wife. We will be talking about things about the wife. Amen. And uh, we'll see. Tingnan po natin kung anong hanggang saan kaya ang atin pong ano po, oras ngayong umaga. Amen. And now, uh, again, once again, welcome both dito sa Zoom. We have good number dito sa Zoom. At ganun din dito po sa Facebook Live. Good morning po sa lahat. So we will ask our host to play um, uh, just one good music uh, for us to prepare para po sa atin pong discussion ngayong umaga. Okay? And uh, let's ask uh, Mr. Host, please. the Lord for that. Amen. Thank God for that song. Amen. So this morning is will be, uh, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer then. And after that, we'll go on ahead with our Bible study. Okay, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for this great opportunity, Lord, na na pinagkalog niyo sa amin. Nawa, Lord, yung mga matutunan namin ngayong umaga ay maging profitable po sa sa bawat pamilya, sa bawat simbahan po ng mga individual na kasama namin ngayon dito. And sana magamit po nila sa marriage life nila, sa kanila pong family at saka sa church. 
ito yung pinaka purpose panginoon ng mga programa natin namin dito and you know lord ikaw nakakita sa aming mga puso so nawa lord ay ma-enjoy namin ang inyong salita at matuto kami at gamitin namin para sa inyong kapurihan so pagpalain niyo panginoon ang aming pag-usapan ngayong umaga so binabalik po namin lord kung ang lahat ng pasasalamat at kung ano man ang matutunan namin na why ito ay um, mag, mag-redown lamang sa inyong glory. And this we ask in Jesus' name, Amen and Amen. So once again, good morning and welcome po everyone dito. Okay, so let's go to Ephesians chapter number 5 and uh, we we dealt on this, ito pong verse number 22, uh, verse 21, Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So last time I gave you that chart that I made last uh, uh, 2015, yung chart ng chart ng pattern on biblical submission, and it has been a blessing. I believe the Lord has used that to many many pastors and teachers also na kanila pong ginagamit din and uh, na intindihan yung yung pagkaplat natin sa sa verse number 21 ito submitting yourselves one another in the fear of God. Okay, so we will detail on that as we go on by and by in this series. Nasa part pa rin tayo ng introductory. We have not touched yet the specifics. Okay, the specifics of of ano, of, of these uh, lessons like the specifics for the wife, specifics for the husband in which uh, most likely um, next week na yon, or maybe Depende sa, sa, sa length ng ating discussion ngayon, maybe we will touch ano po mga kapatid. Hindi natin mamadaliin pero gusto po natin na mailatag natin ang lahat at ma, maintindihan maging kagamit-gamit po ito. Uh, of course, sa relationship muna sa Panginoon and uh, sa iyong husband or sa iyong wife, sa iyong married life and ganun din sa iyong family, sa iyong home at of course, sa iyong local church po, mga kapatid. Na lahat, ito yung application, eh. ito yung mga avenues kung saan ang mga truths na inyong napapakinggan at natutunan ay ma-apply doon sa mga, Pastor Ben call it love structures. Okay? He call it love structures. Amen? So, now, this morning is, uh, we, we talk about also in this part, medyo irita ang aking ilong. Pasensya na po, ha? And, Uh, we we talk about in this verse 21 also on that mutuality in submission so we talk about that submission is one to another hindi lang siya one sided the reciprocity of 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 submission ay makikita natin and that god has designed authority into a family the same time meron ding submission one to another so na, na take up na natin yan in in full length and if you'd like to know more of that you may watch the videos before uh, yung last time nating diniskas po nito po mga kapatid okay so we look at some some principles in in the bible and of course uh, uh, may mga natutunan tayo with regards to headship with regards to submission and all of that because marriage carries a mutual submission and it also have mutual obligation therefore there must be mutual submission to that obligation amen if marriage have a mutual obligation therefore it, there must also be mutual submission to that amen to that ano po mga kapatid to that uh, marriage okay I, to that obligation now we also talk about the preservation of marriage and family And as this what this is our actually our closing introduction dito sa part po na ito para mapuntahan natin yung mga details and specifics. So and of course it is time for us Christian to reiterate that divine pattern na ating dinidiscuss na pinag-usapan and our marriages our families should demonstrate a way of living. Amen. That is rewarding that is uh that is in line with the will of god that is meaningful that is also fulfilling and that divine pattern should be evident amen to the world as they look at 
the Christian families and marriages. It should be evident. Dapat makikita nila at it should be observable. I say that observable. Okay? And uh, But sadly, unfortunately po mga kapatid, um, the world's problem of divorce, of broken home, broken family, the, wor- the world's problem of uh, messed up relationship has also become the problem of, of our families. And that's very sad. Has become also the problem of our churches. And that's very sad. But God has a divine standard. This is, this is the, our topic actually, the biblical pattern on biblical submission. That's, that's our subject. No? God has that biblical standard that can make our marriage and family of what they ought to be. God has his own instruction so that we can be spared from the problem of the world. Amen. God has given us these things so that the problem of the world will not become our problem. Amen. But those who insist their own way, those who who insist their own uh, wisdom in how to run their family, um, they are the one who brought disgrace to the design of the Lord. And they willfully violated this instruction. And they think they're, they're wiser than God. And the, the end result was destruction. And destruction even to, to uh, the most basic okay, structure of the society. And that's the, the family. So, of course, it's time to preserve. We can preserve. We, all we have to do is to go back to the Bible. And one time I heard Dr. Rachman and he said in his preaching, he said, if you don't go back to the Bible, you will go back to the jungle. And really, really, you will go back to the jungle. If you don't go back to the Bible, you will go back to disorderliness, to anarchy. Amen. And that's what happened po, mga kapatid, to many of a jungle life. Could you imagine a jungle life? Wala pong, wala pong order. Sino lang kung... Every, everyone is praying about another, okay? And everyone wants to be the predator, amen, and things like that. So we have to put this into utmost priority. That, that's why in preserving a, of marriage, we should, we should make this a priority, amen? If we don't preserve the family, if we don't preserve... Amen. Our marriages, our home, you know what will happen? Our society will crumble. Our churches will crumble. Because the family is the basic building block of the society. So when it goes, everything goes. Do, 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 do you understand what I mean? If it's successful, amen. if it goes up, then everything goes. But if it failed, then everything fails. Amen. So the ability to pass on this meaningful advice to our next generation, to our children, is lost. And there is no more communication about those, these things. There is no more discipline. Yun ang problema. Every society becomes an end in itself. Amen. And we need to prioritize this. We should not neglect this. This is too big to be neglected. You know, when it comes to the problem in our society, this is the elephant in the room. You understand when I say elephant in the room? That this is the obvious problem. And yet we neglected the elephant. It is too big not to be seen. Amen. So the problem now is those who are the loudest, those who are the most vocal, those who are those who are uh, um, yung, your, those who are rebellious of God's word, they are the one that will dominate. So you know, naging problema. So let's go back to the Bible. Let's let's make this again a priority. And the secondly, we talk about the presumption or the presupposition. The presupposition over here na makikita po natin 
is that before you can know the biblical pattern or that divine pattern that make our marriages and our family life mga kapatid successful or even meaningful so there us there is a special requirement that we have to meet ano tong supposition na ito ang supposition po na ito is you must be saved you must be saved And when you look at the Bible with regards to the instruction of the family, specifically, specifically in dito sa book of Ephesians, okay, it discusses the divine pattern that is laid down by God, but it is written to believers. Are you listening? It is commanded, amen, and charged to the believers, sa mga ligtas, sa mananampalataya. If you are not a believer, There is a little hope that you can make your marriage and family anything near what God intends it to be. So ang mundo ngayon, merong sariling marriage counseling, meron silang sariling concepts of marriage. But mga kapatid, all of these things, regardless and the best of their ability, they're all humanistic. Some maybe of these things are, are practical in thoughts, but they're all humanistic. And uh, of course, they are based after the flesh. They are not based on the wisdom of God, but they va- based on the faulty wisdom of men. Now, I'm not saying that non-believers can't have meaningful relationship. Okay? They can, po mga kapatid, but only up to a point. They could never reach that fulfillment. They could never reach to that fulfilled family, fulfilled marriage. They will never know total fulfillment. As an individual can find fulfillment, saan ka ba makahanap ng fulfillment? You can only find fulfillment in a relationship with God. And that starts with your salvation. And that is the supposition of this, that you could not apply this without being saved, without having the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. And you need to have first relationship with God in salvation. Amen. And a family can find fulfillment only if it is if its definition is designed and authored by God himself. Amen. So apart a point so apart from knowing Jesus Christ. Amen. Apart from knowing him as your personal savior. We can't expect a family to be fulfilled. Amen. Because God is the one who created man. God is the one who invented marriage and the family. And he wrote the book on how marriage is to function. Amen. He laid down these specific instructions. So the, the, the presupposition is that You're supposed to be saved first. Amen. Amen. And that's the thing. Now, the next one we, we look at is the power. So there is more to have a meaningful, fulfilled marriage. Consider the power. There's the power behind this fulfilled marriage and family than just being a believer. Okay, then just being, it's one thing to be saved. That's a good start. Amen. Praise God. But that's not all about it. Because there are many Christians who know, I know, huh? I know, there, I know many Christians who know and love the Lord who are not living according to his moral, to his marital, to his, to his familial principles. Amen. Why? Because they are not filled with the Spirit. That's why, bago papasok dito sa, sa verse number 21, makikita mo sa verse number 18, and wherein, but be filled with the Spirit. It was first exalted before the wife was commanded to submit, the ha- com- before the husband was commanded to love, before the children was commanded to obey, the father before the father was commanded to to uh, ano po, admonish and before the servant was commanded to obey and the, the master to forbear, 
we they are all commanded first to be filled with the spirit and that is the power behind and the holy spirit is that power po mga kabatid amen so it is one thing to possess the spirit of god when you got saved you are possessed by the spirit of god amen it's one thing to be possessed by the spirit of god but it's another thing to be filled by the spirit of god so in other words po mga kabatid every believer if you are saved every believer possesses the spirit of god but it is not always controlled by the spirit of god but it is not always filled with the spirit of god and when we are not controlled by the spirit of god ito po magiging problem po natin our family life our marriage life will manifest that okay so a carnal believer is not filled with the spirit then a carnal believer is going to have discord in his family is going to have discord in any form of relationship why because first and foremost he has discord between himself and god so to be a believer is the starting point that's why that is the pre supposition that is the 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 starting point amen but being filled with the spirit controlled by the spirit that is the one that actually brings result amen that is what brings results pangakabaten so we have a lot of information today we live in this in this in this touch okay the screen touch and all of that in this technology the advancement of internet and of google and of of research uh, machines and, and 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 all of this we're flooded with information on about even about marriage today there are there are a lot of marriage seminars there are about a lot of marriage conferences there are a lot of marriage encounters or marriage books and marriage counselors and a lot of website about marriage about many things there are so many informations today amen amen then people think the first thing to do when they have marital problem you know the first thing they they think that the first thing to do when they have marital problem is to see a counselor is to see a psychiatrist is to see some sort of analyst or to buy a supply of books or to maybe go to a seminar or maybe to listen to tapes and watch videos in youtube and all of that or maybe fill out a checklist and fill out a chart or fill out or whatever uh, whatever uh, uh, documents that they need to do amen now i don't want to oversimplify this brethren but Ito po sa ko, but if you are not filled with the Spirit, Amen, you can do all those things, Amen, but none of them will matter. Are you listening? None of them will matter. Now, on the other hand, if you are filled with the Spirit, Amen, He'll take control of your relationship. Amen. Now, counseling books and seminars and those conference, marriage conferences or those videos that we can see. Amen. Amen. They can be helpful in giving you practical hints. Maybe they can be helpful in giving you practical hints on how being filled with the Spirit should work itself out in your relationship. But the essence of the Christian life is to be filled and controlled by the holy spirit that's really so only that when only when that happens in our families amen when only that when that will happen to our families be what god wants them to be so that is what paul is saying in that ephesians 5:18 the beginning that sets the tone before any submission 
happening, there must be first being filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. Now, if you want true Christianity, if you want true communion with God, if you want true worship to take place, if you want that such godly living, if you want to please God, then you must be filled with the Spirit of God and not controlled by anger, not controlled by greed, self-righteousness, and even alcohol. But we ought, we ought to be controlled by the Spirit of God. Now, the next thing is, in preservation of our families, we need the pure Word of God. We need, not only need to be saved, amen, not only we need, to, we need the power of the Holy Spirit, but of course, amen, there must be the pure word of God. So it, the parallel passage which I discussed last time in, in this, in Colossians 3.16, that is the parallel passage of Ephesians 5.18, Colossians 3.16. So in Ephesians 5.18, we are told to be filled. But in Colossians 3.16, we are told, Paul said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. So, kanina, we are filled with the Spirit. Now, ang, what do we mean by being filled with the Spirit is this, that letting the word of God dwell in you richly. So, richly, you, are be, you will be filled. You will richly be indwelt by the word of God. So it is synonymous with being filled with the Spirit. If you are filled with His words, if you let the Word come in and be filled with it, amen, it is the same thing with being filled with the Spirit. So the point is, when the Word of Christ dominates your life and you respond in obedience to what the Word of God says, it's the same as being controlled by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Why? Because the author, the Spirit, is the author of the Scripture. And obedience to the Word is obedience to the author, as if the author is the one who controlled you. Right? The Holy Spirit is the author of the Scripture. So obedience to the Word is being filled with the Spirit. So when we talk about being filled with the Spirit, we're not talking about some spooky things. We're not talking about some mystical experience. We're not talking about some form of sen sensation. We're not talking about some voices that you heard. That's not what we mean when being filled with the Spirit. It is not some kind of e ecstatic thing. It's not some, something that comes over you and brings you into some unconscious behavior. It is not launching off into some ecstatic okay, speech. It's not going out yourself and, and being beyond your control. That's not being filled with the Spirit. Being filled with the Spirit, is, it is simply to be continuously controlled by the Spirit. Amen. Who does it? How will He control you? Through the Word. And that means we are obeying the truth. Amen. So we have to start at that point. Amen. What we're going to do in terms of our Christian life, amen, whether it's our marriage, whether it's our family, brethren, it has to flow out of a life that is controlled by the Spirit. And that's why the society, mga kapatid, really has no chance. Those God a rejecting world, those Bible rejecting society, amen, they have no chance. They have no hope because they are not saved. They're not regenerated. They don't know God. They have no more hope of getting it right. And it's not going to happen to them because a right kind of marriage relationship and a right kind of family relationship is built on a redeemed life. It, it is built on a regenerated life. It is empowered, amen, by the Holy Ghost. And it is by obedience to the Word of God. And the society is missing that. 
And do you realize, Christian, what do you have? Do you realize now, Christian, how blessed we are to have these things? So we are better off. Do you realize that we are better off? Because of these things. Amen. Amen. And you have the book there. Love the book. Read the book. Base your life on the book, not on psychology, not on the humanistic point of view, but in the viewpoint of God who designed marriage, who invented this relationship that we have. Amen. Then we look at the word, the praise. Last one is the praise. Amen. So the result of, of having all this being saved, being have the power of the Holy Spirit filled with the Spirit and have the Word of God in obedience to the Word of God, the result of that is praise. That's why the next verse in verse 18, in verse 19 of Ephesians 5, the outcome is speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Amen. So let me tell you something that where the Spirit of God, listen, where the Spirit of God controls a life, where there is devoted, where there is a life that is, you know, devoted to the Word of God, and where there is, you can have a life that is obedience to the Word of God, can I tell you something when you have that? There is praise. Amen. And I suppose, obviously, that we could conclude that a worshiping life, a praising life comes from a heart that is filled with joy. And it's that simple. You, it's this simple. That you give me an obedient person, obedient to the word of God, and I'll show you a positive, a happy, a praising, a worshiping person whose heart is filled with psalms and hymns and spiritual song. And who is singing and making melody in his heart to the Lord. And I'll show you a person who can get along with anybody. Amen. Because they are lost in wonder, love and praise because they are worshiping the Lord. And that person that is filled with praise is also filled with thanksgiving in that verse number 20. It, it tells us that giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I tell you what it's very hard, you know, so it's very hard to argue with somebody who is keep praising God, who is Thankful for everything. Do you know why our marriages and our family breaks? Because the member is a bunch of ungrateful individuals. You know why there is quarrel? You know why there's always disagreement in the family, in marriages, or even in our churches? Because the one that composed the marriage and the home and in our churches are a bunch of ungrateful people. There is no praise and there is no appreciation. But if there is somebody who is thankful, who is praising God, it's very hard to argue with those who are thankful for everything. Amen. You find a person who is filled with the Spirit, and I'll show you a person that is thankful person. Find a person that is obedient to the word of God and I'll show you a person that is thankful. A person obeying the word of God is a person filled with joy. It is filled with praise and worship and thanksgiving and a person who has nothing but thanks for everything God has done is going to be a wonderful person to live with. Do you like to live along with a person that is Yung reclamador. Hello, complainers. 
mahirap mamuhay sa mga ganong klasing tao. Kasarap kaya kasama na ang isang, how could you argue with somebody na who would never complain but just praise and appreciate all things that they have? Sometimes, sinisisi palagi natin ang, ang husband natin, ang wife natin, ang ganito, ganito, ganito kasi. But we never dare to look ourselves and assess ourselves and examine ourselves and look at. And we never learn to appreciate. That's the bottom line. We are really talking here not about some kind of gimmicks. When I... When we lay this preservation of the family, we're not talking about some kind of gimmicks that would make your marriage work. We're not talking about that kind of things that we read about in such humanistic psychological books. We're not talking about some self-hypnosis and some positivity thing that you may read in, in, in many books that are teaching right now. We're not talking about buying your wife a teddy bear or a flower or some, some um, sweets and chocolates and all of that. Amen. And bring it home and say, dear surprise. Understand, we're not talking about that. Amen. You're not going to be able to prepare a marriage like that. You're not going to be able to make a meaningful relationship like that. And I hear suggestion all the time, left and right, that you have to take your wife on a date, take her on a dinner. Well, that's a good thing. That's a very good thing, a wonderful thing. And we should. And we should sometimes, amen. And if not, sometimes we have every opportunity, we should. That's all fine. That's all good. But that's not going to repair a marriage that is not right. That is not going to repair a marriage that is not right in starting a family in a marriage. You have to go back to where God laid it. You have to check that salvation thing. You have to check the, the role of the Holy Spirit. You have to check both of you, your obedience to the word of God. You have to check that thankful spirit to every one of us. There's only one way to cultivate a right relationship with anybody, and that's to be filled with the Spirit of God, and you will be filled with the praise and gratitude to God so that your heart is overflowing with joy, and whoever you get along, you are always thankful. You are always appreciative. And that's what makes a person Someone that you can live with. Someone who is a blessing to you. Amen. It should be, frankly, that almost impossible to start a fight with you because you are too blessed. You are too full of praise. You are too full of thanks. And you are too full of overflowing of the word of God. And too controlled with the spirit. Sino makipag-away sa'yo kung ganun ka? Meron ba? Kasi ang pag-away, dalawa eh. Dalawang side yan eh. Awayin mo siya, hindi kanya awayin. May away mangyayari? Wala. Amen. At ba't mo aawayin ang isang taong too kind? Amen. Too thankful. Ba't aawayin mo siya? Eh kung ganun ang husband and wife, ganun ang lahat ng membro sa pamilya. And which is God's expectation for all of us? Anong meron? Our family would be filled with love, with joy, with peace, with goodness, with faith, with meekness, with temperance. Because we let the Holy Spirit take control. Amen. So, if you are, if you are filled with love, joy, peace, gentleness, if you are filled with the Spirit. Amen. Your spouse, your children, 
may just get upset at their inability to cause conflict. They're upset at their inability to cause conflict. They'll be upset. Oh, how could I done such thing to that? How could I? Na masabi sa kanya yun. How could I do this na nakakaya naman? So, do you see that? Yun ang magiging impact na kagad. So, it has to start there. It has to start there. Brother. Now, let's look at the real issue then. Let's look at the real issue. What is the heart of the matter? What is the real issue? This is the groundwork, brethren. This is what makes meaningful relationship. But the truth is, it's a spiritual issue. What is the issue, really? It is not about, it's not about lacking of these things, lacking of that thing. It is not just even about personality-wise, but it is a spiritual issue. The breaking of our marriages, the breaking of our homes, the disintegration of our homes and families is a spiritual issue. It is not a matter of cleverness. When you start to build your home, it's not about being educated or magaling dumiskarte. No, it's not a matter of cleverness. It's not a matter of ideas. It is not a matter of scheduling of events. It's not a matter of scheduling of events. It's not a matter of buying gifts or whatever or reverse or, or buying one to another gifts or maybe cooking some of his favorite meal or that's, that's not about it. The real issue is, is spiritual. Amen. Those are nice little things to do when your marriage is right. Amen. But listen, but with two people, just think of a husband and wife, two people who live according to the standard that we've just read. Amen. It would not matter whether you did those or you didn't do them. That's not the stuff that makes for a lifelong joy in relationship. And you can look at our society today. You can see that's exactly why it won't happen. Right? In, in spite of what they're doing. Bakit? Because the mindset today the current trend today sa panahon natin is self-centered pride. Their relationship is not centered on another. Their relationship is centered on themselves. And they will say, I'm going to stay with you as long as you give me what I want. I'm going to stay with you as long as you make me happy. And when you don't do that, when you don't give me what I want, I'm out here. These are egocentric individuals. And that is the emphasis today. The emphasis on individualism, in, in emphasis on its rights, emphasis on its freedoms and its liberties and self-esteem. All of that individualistic thinking, they are absolutely deadly. They are deadly to any form of relationship to any meaningful marriage and family relationship. They're deadly. Amen. Because in gaining the rights that the humanists, the worldly people have sold us and gaining the rights of the individual freedom, when you are so concerned about gaining your rights and gaining your rights, we have lost actually the privileges of having meaningful relationships. And the price of our sought-after liberty and freedom and rights. Do you understand? This is very sad. In the end, 
is going to be isolation. In the end, it's going to be loneliness. Amen. You'll, you'll feel with a lot of frustrations. Because I tell you this. Because not everybody could give you what you want. And I'll tell you this. Marriage is not about you. But it's about God who designed marriage. And it's about the object of your responsibility. Which is your wife, your husband, your children. And they're not about you. I'm sorry. Amen. People become like objects. Ano nangyayari? To be used. Pag ayaw na, they discarded. And they become like strangers. And families are more like a bunch of disconnected living, disconnected people living in a boarding house. As if they're not related. They're more interested in self-fulfillment than giving. There are more desirous families right now, members of the families right now, and the individuals right now are more desirous of material goods than relationship. They're more desirous of what they can take rather than the very person. Just like Christians right now, we are concerned about what God gave rather than God himself. And that's us. And if we stay in that valley, we will never reach somewhere. Amen. We are more longing to be independent than dependent. We are more, we become more concerned about themselves or ourselves than anyone else. And in fact, po, mga kapatid, almost exclusively concerned about ourselves. And it's very sad today that we are seeing, nakikita natin yung mga wives, nakikita natin yung mga husband as a burden. Kaya it's a, it's a, it's a really, really a mess up mind sa mga young men. But hindi ka pa nag-asawa? Ayaw ko magka-problem? Ayaw ko ma-burden? Because they look at wife or husband being a burden. They look at marriages as an obstacle to their path toward personal freedom and fulfillment. Right? That's the mindset today. And they're, they're looking, mga kapatid, they're looking at their children as an expense item. As a barrier to the fulfillment of their overwhelming selfishness. That's how look at pe people right now. So th they said, oh, I, I'm not ready to marry. I'll, let's just have this relationship and let's just decide later. Because I still want to enjoy. Y yun po yun. Yun po yung mindset. May mga, may mga couple na sometimes seven years, five years, seven years, even ten years. They decided na hindi mo na tayo magkaanak. Why? The, the woman would say, ayaw ko mo na magkaanak. Kasi masisira ang aking figure. What? Ay, baka mabato ko ang aking, ang aking monitor dito. Hindi. <laughs> Woo! Amen! Wag muna kasi paano yan? Didedi sa akin yan, sama-sama sa akin yan. Too early. Ay wag muna, mahal ang, mahal ang gatas. Wag muna, ganito, ganyan. So it's a bunch of overwhelming selfish people. Amen. Look at children as an expense item. Can I tell you this also? 
just the mindset of the people right now that couples right now husbands and wives right now would want to have some cute cats some cute dogs rather than children to be raised for the lord hello they even want they don't want to have children they just want dogs and cats amen the mind right now are messed up and they'll say oh because children are expensive and they'll buy food for dogs and cats and they have some parlor for their dogs and cats and they have some doctors for their dogs and cats and wala kayong panggastos ng <laughs> amen amen i'm just preaching i'm not angry okay i'm just preaching <laughs> that's right do you understand what kind of world we live in amen there used to be a time that children's are heritage of the lord and it the bible says still heritage of the lord they're a blessing they're not a burden they're not an expensive expense item they're a blessing from the lord brethren amen and while others Amen. While others are are praying for kids and they're praying for children, others don't want. They just want dogs and cats. Amen. Because the issue is where we are self righteous. We are self centered. Amen. You see that, po mga Kapatid, families, meaningful marriages, which are so essential to society and its preservation. Amen. Which are so essential to real fulfillment in life are only possible where you have unselfish attitudes, where personal desires are constantly sacrificed for others. And if that's not happening in our marriages, and if that's not happening in our churches and in our families, amen. In our relationship, there cannot be meaningful and fulfilled, amen, and a God-spirit-filled relationship. You cannot have the collision of two independently selfish individuals and build a relationship. You cannot have that. That's impossible. If that will happen, it would become a battle of people struggling to humble themselves. And that is important to note. That's the key to all relationship, to be spirit-filled, to be speaking one to another in psalms and hymns and in spiritual song, and to be saying thanks, amen, one to another, and to be submissive one to another. That is very important to note. Just these five things over here, this is the foundation. Amen. That's where you have to start this whole thing. Where you have people who walk in the spirit, fulfilling the word of God in obedience to the truth, where you have people po mga kapatid with a song in their heart and a song in their lips in a praise in their lips where you have people who say thanks for everything that comes into their life and where you have people who are so eager in fact 
Amen. They're so excited to take every occasion to humble themselves, mga kapatid, and submit themselves to those, mga kapatid, around them. And there you will have a meaningful relationship. And that's what God tells us to where and to how we should build a relationship. And that's very rare right now. The admonition of this preacher over here, let's go back to the Bible. Amen. Let me use that quotation of, of that old preacher. If you don't go back to the Bible, you will go back to the jungle. Your marriages will become a jungle. Your families will become a jungle. Amen. Your churches will become a jungle. And you know what a jungle is. There is anarchy. There is chaos. There is disorderliness. Amen. Amen. So, and if we don't start there, Amen. If we don't start here, I'm sorry, but the rest is hopelessness. The rest is just hopelessness. Amen. Now, if you look at that, if you look at that and look at our society right now, tingnan mo, tingnan mo paligid you can see that there is no way. No way. You, because you see everywhere you go, you see people consume with iniquity. And they're not interested in the word of God. At sila ay nakukonsume sa lahat ng anumang ginagawa nila that their lust is driving them to do. And look at everywhere they are fulfilling their own desires all over the place. And all over the place you will see infidelity, sexual perversions, and whatever they, it might be. You'll see that everywhere, that such corruption of men. And you have people who basically have no joy over, or we, they have no joy, or they, maybe they have very little of it. And maybe occasionally they will find it in, in a bar or in a bottle of beer or in a bottle of wine. Amen. Or maybe that joy, that little happiness that they have, maybe because nataasan ang kanilang sahod or baka nag, 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 ano sila, nag, namasyal sila sa isang lugar dito sa Pilipinas or nag beach or they have that vacation trip. Or whatever trip they have, oh, tumatawa sila, nag-selfie-selfie, enjoy sa pictures. Or maybe because they have some great experience somewhere. But generally, they don't have that joy actually. They don't have it. That real genuine joy that God, that only God can give. Their hearts are not filled with overwhelming joy bursting out all the time. Amen. I don't see society like that. I don't see our neighborhood like that. I don't see that in our country that they have that real joy. What I see is a very depressed society. What I see is you mga tao kulang sa pansin. What I see is people, bunch of some individual rights, concern about so much rights on their own. What I see are people that are not thankful. Murmurers are everywhere. And what I see is people who have never have, they never have enough. What I see is that people who are not willing to submit anything to anybody else. What I see is people who wants to run their own agenda rather than what God says. 
So what I'm saying is this, looking around, looking everywhere, looking how sick this world is, there's just no chance. Listening, there's just no chance without God. There's just no chance without regeneration. Without salvation, there's not just no chance without the Spirit of God. There's just no chance without the Word of God. No chance at all. So if we would like to preserve that meaningful marriage and family that we have, whom God has given us, and that is the grace of God, amen, stay to these things. Amen. Amen. Let's go back to these things. That's the only way. And you add on top of all of those things that I have mentioned. On top of that, there are ideological lies. There are philosophical lies. There are humanistic lies. It becomes a stronghold. It becomes a fortress of human speculation that is erected against the word of God. And so much na may problema mga tao ngayon dahil may gumagawa ng sistema pamamaraan that is anti-Bible. And it becomes a stronghold that Paul described it in 2 Corinthians 10.5. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10.5, ito yung nangyayari. There are high things that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Amen. Sana yung ating verse, Mr. Host. Amen. Yun ang nangyayari. The Bible says, ako na, 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, verse number 5. Ano sabi ng Bible? Casting down imagination. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And there is that high thing that is designed to oppose the Bible. These are ideological lies. And it becomes a fortress to many mind. Amen. These ideologies that have to do with humanism, these ideologies that are centered to the freedom of man, to the comforts of man, these are humanism and these are sexual freedom and homosexuality and all the things that destroy the family. Amen. The ideology po mga kapatid that you don't need to get married, you can just have sex, have relationship until you're tired of it, then dump them and you can just go find another and find somebody you're not tired of and have some more of it. That's the idea. Those are the ones that, that has been placed in the minds of, of our young people. Amen. And that's very sad. Amen. The idea that pwede kang mabuntis kahit hindi ka pakasalan, kahit walang husband, anyway, pwede naman magpa-abort. Anyway, hindi ko naman kailangan nila. Gusto ko lang mapaanakan yung mga ganyang mga klaseng mga babae. And the mindset of whore. Amen. Pwede kang makabuntis. Anyway, amen. Kahit saan ka magpunta, pwede mo naman silang iniwan. Amen. And to them, that's fine. That's wonderful. And that's cool. We can accept that. Ibang klaseng society, meron tayo po mga bread. All of those ideologies compounded with this personal selfishness. You know what they're going to do? It leaves nothing but disaster. Desolation. And destruction. Absolute destruction. Amen. It kills our joy. It kills, amen, the joy of others. It is very destructive. 
So, mga kapatid, so when we think about this whole subject of the family, when we think about this whole subject of preserving our marriage and family, we have to start with these spiritual issues. We have to address this selfishness. We have to address this unregenerated state. We have to address this ideological lies that go against the Bible. We have to start with these spiritual issues. And from there, we can start to talk about the specifics. Do you understand why I spent since since we started our this series, the pattern on biblical submission? We have not touched the specifics yet. The specifics about the wife, the specifics about the husband, we have not touched yet, which I plan supposedly today or next week. We have not touched it yet. All of that. Why? Because we want to establish this. We need to know the real issue, why we have to do those things. Because we have to start with these spiritual issues. And from there, then we can start to talk about the specifics. And if you have a spirit-filled and obedient and praising and worshiping and thankful and submissive heart, if you have that, by the grace of God, you've got something that's going to make a wonderful family, a wonderful marriage, a wonderful life. Amen. You are that wonderful person that I need to know and to be with. You are such, you will become a person to be, uh, uh, such a, a person to be wonderful to be with. Amen. Anything else, mga kapatid, if we are not like that, anything else is a battle for your own way. If not about the Spirit, if it's not about the Word of God, if it's don't have that submissive, thankful heart, anything else is a battle for your own way. And it's that simple. And only the power of the Holy Spirit as instructed through the word of God, can overrule, can undo, can change this and such produce that fulfillment, that joy, that peace that is coming from God. Amen. And we need that. See, D.L. Moody one time, D.L. Moody, if you know, he's an evangelist in 1800, late 1800 and a well-known evangelist. He was once asked his audience, tinanong niya ang kanyang audience with a simple question. And sabi niya, um, Teka, kukuha pa, mayroon na ako i-request saglit before I'll, 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 I'll make my point. May i-request lang ako to illustrate. Okay, may illustration na kung nai-illustrate and with this, nagpakuha ko na actually ng tubig. No? And uh, sabi ni D.L. Moody, he said, sabi niya, sa kanyang, this, this is not mine, this is D.L. Moody's illustration. And uh, sabi niya, I want you to tell me how to remove the air out of the glass. So, so mayroon siyang glass, so I have a glass. Sabi niya, I want you to remove the air out of the glass. So an empty glass. So of course, may air talaga yan dyan, no? So how to remove the air out of the glass? So ginano niya. Then one, one people would say, I, one people answered, one, one person in that congregation, in that room yielded. Sabi niya, suck it out. 
So pasipsipan daw with a pump. So kuha ka daw ng pump para para daw mawala yung para mawala yung ano, para mawala yung 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 hangin. Okay? So ang sagot ni Dihel Moody doon sa sinasabi ng tao na yon, sabi niya, that would create a vacuum pag isasak mo and it cost mag-shatter yung glass, mabasag yung glass. So disaster kung yun ang gagawin mo. And marami pang other mga impossible answers were called out doon sa time na yon. And some someone would even say, sabi niya, turn the glass upside down. At iganun mo, itaob mo. So mawala yung yung hangin na yon. So of course, meron pa ring hangin pag itaob mo yan, magkakahangin pa rin yan nasa loob. Okay? Matatrap ba? Then of course, sa lahat ng mga suggestion ng mga tao, finally si DL Moody po mga kapatid ay pinakita niya kung paano po na mawala yung air sa glass. Ang kinuha niya, kumuha siya ng picture, okay? Na may lamang tubig at ang ginawa niya po mga kapatid ay pinuno niya yung glass. Yan. And nung pinuno na niya yung glass, ang sabi niya, there the air is out. Napalitan na eh. Pag empty, puro hangin ang laman. Tama? Pero, nung pinuno niya, yun, sabi niya, all the air now is out. So, the point of that, it is perfectly simple po mga kapatid in that sense. That you can eliminate the air of our marriages, of our homes, but not with the pumps or other humanly device or other human schemes of psychology or of humanism or of traditions or of any worldly ideology. You could not remove the air. The air speaks of the problem. You could not remove all of that. But only when you fill your life with that living water, the Spirit of God, the Word of God, that divine truth. Amen. That's the way to remove it. Can I tell you something? I said this many times, that if you are not filled with the Spirit of God, you are filled with something else. It could be pride, it could be arrogance, it could be selfishness. You can be filled with something else. But if you are filled with the Word of God, and if you let the Word of God dwell in you richly, and filled with the Word of God, uh, with the Spirit of God, then, ano pang pwede mong mailagay kung puno na? Because the Holy Spirit is already preoccupied you. The Word of God has already saturated you. Sino pang pwede may pasok? May mailagdag ka pa sa puno na? Wala. Tama? Wala ka na may dagdag sa puno na. Amen. Kaya, let the Word of Christ, Colossians 3, verse 16, dwell in you richly. Amen. Dwell in you richly. And that's where we have to start. Amen. Now, if we do this, if we have to make some, some commitment and walk in light of this truth, amen, the blessing of the grace of life and the joy of marriage and family, it will be ours too. Because God meant it na ma-enjoy natin ang binigay ng Panginoon na provision sa atin. 
and let's start somewhere. And we ought to start there. And what we're going to do, so it's time, it's 11.30 o'clock, but we have mabibitin lang tayo if I'm going to start with the next. So that means I have, I have already laid this foundation starting from the very thing. Then this time, we are now going to the specifics. But I will not start with the specific. We'll, we'll, let's leave it next week. And I'd like the wives here, the mothers here, to please, you may invite somebody, you may attend, and this would be helpful things. And we will be talking about next week the submission of the wife. We will now discuss verse number 22 of Ephesians 5 and all the way to verse 24 and verse 33. The wives are called to submit, to be subject, and to reverence their own husband. So we'll deal on that as we, as we go on on this. And I'll pray for that. I'll pray that it would be a help. And I have, I have updated this lesson that we have so that we could talk about more at ma, 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 ano pa natin, ma, ma discuss natin thoroughly yung mga kailangan po mga kapatid. So, uh, attend next week with a, especially sa topic na ito, with a grateful heart because if you don't, magre-reklamo ka sa akin. Okay? If you are not right with God, magagalit ka sa akin. Okay? So, yun po yung atin pong i-discuss, brethren, next week. Okay? Pero ready ka. Lord, mag-pray muna ako kasi baka anong sasabihin ni Evangelist Roji galing sa salita ng Diyos, hindi ako ready, baka mag-react ako at ayaw ko ng pakinggan. Okay po? So, pag-usapan na natin. So, at least, we have a very, very long days awaiting us kasi ang dami nating pag-uusapan patungkol dito. I don't know kung ilang weeks natin pag-usapan si wife. Si wife mo na, si mother. Ang ating pag-usapan. You'll enjoy. That become a help to our church and to our families here. And I'm, I'm sure that it can be of great help sa lahat po ng who are seeking, desiring to know the will of God sa kanila pong buhay. And I hope you learn anything and something today, and I'm so glad po mga kapatid na nagkaroon tayo ng broadcast ngayon at na-discuss ang mga bagay na ito. Salamat sa mga brethren na nandyan sa, sa Facebook at dito sa meeting room. And alam ko medyo bitin kayo kasi sanay kayo sa akin na sometimes 11.30 na. Pero ako naman ang may bibitin kung aking, aking i, ano, preempt or or ibitin ang, ang, ang discussion para hindi tayo mabitin. Ganun. At least we have space and time to pray about it. Okay? So, thank you for listening. Thank you, brethren. And and uh, let's pray. Lord, salamat sa mga instructions na ito. Really, Lord, it is heartbreaking. At really, Lord, ay nakaka... It's a wake-up call. At nakita namin ng aming mga sarili kung gaano na kami kalala, kung gaano kalaki ng kailangan namin, kung gaano na kami kalayo na nag-depart, Lord, sa inyong mga salita. Tulungan nyo kami, Lord, na makarecover, mabalik, at ang aming mga families ay mas spare pa. Ang aming mga marriages ay mas spare pa. At tulungan nyo kami na maibalik sa buhay na nagpapasalamat, nagko-consider sa salita ng Diyos, at sumusunod sa banal na Espiritu. At thank you sa mga kaluluwa, sa mga individual, na nakikinig ngayon, i-bless nyo po ang salita na aming napakinggan ngayon na makaabot sa puso at isipan ng bawat isa. At itong lahat ay hiniling po namin sa pangalan ng Panginoong Jesus. Amen and Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sister Let. Nandiyan, Sister Let, kasama natin. Sister Senya, kasama din natin. Sister Emma, si Brother Aldrich, Sister Evelyn, at yung mga hindi ko nag-greet kanina, hello po sa inyong lahat, Sister Jesusa. Hello then and God bless po sa ating lahat. Mother Mary at dito lahat sa Zoom and salamat, salamat. Have a good day ahead, brethren. Have a good day. Every hope that I have here in this so sinful world It's anchored in the blood of the Lamb Billows are raging and we're tossed to and fro. There is peace beneath death's 
Oh 